hello and welcome. You're listening to Adventures in the Veil, vale, an RPG discussion podcast. I'm Jake. I'm Ross. Sit back and relax by the fire, for there are tales to be told. Take an L. I'll have that right out. I want a reasonable expectation that my character can live. I want to invest in them. This is what I hear from most modern players that have some exposure to the old school renaissance. It's a reasonable expectation, and it's how most people today enjoy the hobby. I feel, though, that when people see old school lethality this way, they're thinking of it from the point of view of modern RPGs. In this case, I think it would benefit us modern players to turn a modern gaming concept completely on its head, to quote Matt Finch from the Primer for Old School Gaming. For some in the OSR, they really do like the player challenge aspect. They like that their characters could easily die. Life is cheap. This is entertaining. But for others... Old school games provide plenty of enjoyment and features aside from just player challenge and suspense and the threat of death. Old school games and gaming style emphasize player choice and agency. They're minimalist and approachable. They often require less prep and work on the part of both the players and the game master. They have procedures for the world such as random tables and reaction rolls, and they surprise the players but also the Game Master. They allow a story to emerge rather than relying on a pre-written plot. There's a lot to appreciate about old-school design principles that emphasize exploration and wonder over combat and action. So can you enjoy role-playing and in-depth character development in old-school games? Does it have to be so lethal? I don't think it is lethal. In a modern game, if you discover a pirate map and it says, here be dragons. In all likelihood, the Game Master has prepared for a possibility that the characters will go there in their story. The dragon, its story, the encounters, they've all been placed there for the characters to fit around them. In an old school game, the dragon is simply there. Level 1, level 10, it doesn't matter. It's there regardless of if your character even exists. In this way, there's an opportunity for a unique kind of adult make-believe, rather than a curated role-playing experience. It's as if the fantasy world is real. What you do in that fantasy world is entirely up to you. Do you decide to gather a warband and march on the dragon's lair at level 1? You're all incinerated. Was the game lethal? Or did the players choose something lethal? I propose that old school games are not as lethal as they have a reputation to be. Instead, a better word is honest. The players have the responsibility for deciding the lethality and the experience that they want. OSR games are about agency, not lethality. Admittedly, this is somewhat of a polemic. Yes. Old school games are lethal in the sense that your character can die. It can, in my experience, almost be difficult to slay a character in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. When I first ran Old School Essentials and other old school games, for about the first year and a half, I was still learning some of the OSR concepts like lethal but avoidable combat, combat as war, not as sport, don't bury the lead, I'll include a link to Principia Apocrypha in the details if you're new to the OSR and you've never read the document. In those days, our casualty rate was about the same as what occurred in the basic set of Dungeons & Dragons 1981 example of play. That is about a 40% average casualty rate among the player characters across all adventures. During that time, we began to learn OSR principles and change the way we played. 
we began to see combat as less desirable. At the very least, we wanted to pick our battles. We only wanted to strike when it was advantageous to us. We often saw combat as almost a fail state. Usually we were in a dungeon to obtain treasure, not hack away at strange alien underworld beings. When the game is truly open-ended and not just about hacking away at enemies, low hit points and low armor class compared to higher damage in weapons changes the approach to the game. What results is a game that is more about exploration, filled with meaningful choices, and it's actually less violent. In case there's any doubt that this could be the case, our entire 14-month-long Old School Essentials campaign is available on YouTube to watch. No player characters died until month 13 out of 14. And when they did die, they picked their moments to be a hero. It was worth it to them. This style of play manages to provide maximum player agency. It allows for a rich story to emerge that's more than just being a superhero. I've personally come to see superhero stories as less interesting anyway. I find I can't relate to them. When our old school essentials characters became heroes by the end of their campaign, they did so following more than a year-long journey of determination, tension, drama, and grit. It was immensely satisfying to watch it unfold. The OSR offers highly entertaining meat grinder games too, like Dungeon Crawl Classics Funnels and Morkborg. You can also be an adventurer and survive on your wits. And if you do, you can make it for a good long while if you choose to. Mythic Mountains RPG is a private online play club that focuses on folk RPGs. Folk RPGs are the games that belong to all of us. They're what actually happens at a table between friends. It's their voice that has the authority on what is fun and what works for them. Weekly, we upload our games to allow others to sit in with us. The channel isn't monetized. We don't own the artwork, music, software, or games shown in these actual plays, and you can find links to their authors in the description. Like, subscribe, and share if you wish, or don't. Just like games in person, you're welcome to pull up a chair, sit in, and watch some of our games. No performances, no fancy equipment, just regular people playing full pencil and paper role-playing games and having a good time. We hope these games will prove a source of enjoyment to anyone just wanting to listen in, anyone looking for examples of how actual groups run and play folk RPGs, and most importantly, if you haven't found your group yet, you're welcome here at ours.